This exercise involves breathing a little bit less air in order that you feel some slight air hunger. And all you have to do is just focus on the airflow coming in and out of your nose and pay attention to the slightly colder air coming into your nose and the slightly warmer air leaving your nose and gently slow down the speed of the airflow coming in and out of your nose. Can you breathe in almost so slowly that your breath is imperceptible and then you're having a really relaxed and a slow and gentle exhalation. And now to breathe normal for the next minute or so and this way you're just focusing on your breathing. And the whole objective of this exercise is to expose your body to a little bit of an air hunger. This helps to desensitize the reaction, the body's reaction to the feeling of suffocation. And with this as well, when we have a strong feeling towards air hunger, the air hunger can feed into the panic. So it's very important that, you know, we are exposed to a teaspoon of air hunger and that way we're better able to deal with it. And also it's not going to set off such a panic or, or an anxiety. So it's entirely under your own control when you're doing the exercise. Don't worry how you get on. You know, it's just a matter of just focusing your attention on your breath, just gently slowing down your breathing. 30 seconds, that's all. So all you have to do is have an air hunger for 30 seconds and then take a rest for a minute. An air hunger for 30 seconds, a rest for a minute. Air hunger for 30 seconds, a rest for a minute. And again, back into air hunger. So this time you're focusing on the airflow coming in and out of your nose and you are really slowing down the speed of the air coming into your nose and you're having a very relaxed and slow and gentle exhalation. And again, when you feel the airflow coming into your nose, breathe in so soft and so slow and so quiet into your nose. And at the top of the breath, a total feeling of relaxation and a relaxed and gentle exhalation. The objective is to take 30% less air into your body over the course of 30 seconds and now take a rest again for one minute. Just breathe normal for one minute. So it's important also to pay attention to your breathing during rest, of course. It's very common for people when anxiety and panic disorder is present that everyday breathing is a little bit fast, a little bit upper chest, and it can be often irregular as well. So you may notice that if you're sighing from time to time, or if you're just feeling that you're not getting enough air, etc., and it's ironic when your breathing is fast and hard and a little bit upper chest, it's the very time that you feel that you are not getting enough air. So by practicing this exercise, which involves the feeling of air hunger, you help to improve the regularity of your breathing, you have to slow down the respiratory rate, and you also give yourself the tools to be able to bring your breathing from the upper chest towards the diaphragm. So it is exposing your body to air hunger, and this is about improving the biochemistry of your breathing. When you're doing it, don't worry too much if you're breathing upper chest or diaphragm. The whole focus again is breathe less air for 30 seconds. So again, focus on the slightly colder air coming into your nose, and the slightly warmer air as it leaves your nose and really slow down the speed of the air as you take air in and out of the body. You're focusing on that slightly colder air and your breath in is almost imperceptible and the breath out is really slow and relaxed and quiet. Now, if the air hunger gets too much for you, of course, take a rest and now take a rest again. So we only do about 30 seconds and then we take a rest for about a minute or so. Now, of course, throughout your day, it is important to, you know, to uh, pay some attention to your breathing. And it's quite wonderful taking attention out of the mind and into the body and onto the breath. It helps to bring a calmness to the mind and it also helps to bring gaps between thoughts. Because if we're very much living in our head and our mind is agitated, of course our breathing can be agitated. Agitated breathing will agitate the mind and vice versa. So when our breathing is fast and when our breathing is shallow, it's sending a message to the brain that the body is in, you know, an unsafe environment. And the brain is interpreting that fast and shallow breathing, both during rest and during sleep, that the body is under threat. And the brain then is sending signals of not calm, but more alert. So at different times throughout your day, spend 30 seconds just exposing yourself to a little bit of air hunger, then take a rest for a minute or so. 30 seconds again, take a rest for a minute. When you feel comfortable with the air hunger, then you could extend it from maybe 30 seconds to a minute or two minutes or four minutes or five minutes. So it's entirely under your own control. Air hunger is not a bad thing. And um, when you're doing the breathing exercise, when you're breathing less air, of course, carbon dioxide increases in the blood. And as carbon dioxide increases in the blood, you feel air hunger because carbon dioxide is the primary stimulus to breathe. So it's not necessarily that your oxygen levels are dropping. 
The air hunger that you experience is because carbon dioxide is increasing in the blood. The objective is that you feel air hunger, that you would like to take in more air. And of course, as we mentioned earlier, that signifies that carbon dioxide is increasing in your blood. That can be a very good thing because it is helping to desensitize your body's reaction to carbon dioxide. It's helping to desensitize the body's reaction to the feeling of suffocation. It's also helping to improve blood flow to the brain because as carbon dioxide increases in the blood, the main blood vessels that are supplying the brain with, oxygen, with blood flow and oxygen, they dilate. And another factor that happens is that as carbon dioxide increases in the blood, red blood cells which are carrying oxygen release oxygen more readily. So even though you feel air hunger, it's helping to calm the central nervous system, which of course is including the brain. And by doing that, it's helping to calm it by increased blood flow, increased oxygen delivery. So there's a lot going on with that simple exercise.